Thomas Cook bosses, talking of people cruelly lacking stuff, are under pressure to hand back millions of pounds in bonuses of yesterday's collapse of the travel company. Well, it comes as the huge operation to bring home more than 150,000 British holidaymakers continues. And joining us now, broadcaster and former MP George Galloway, who is one of those saying, give back the money. Absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, I'm angry, but not as angry as the 150,000, the end of whose holiday has been ruined, and hundreds of thousands who may not actually even now get on holiday. There's up to a million people. Mm. And the 9,000 uh, staff in the UK and have lost their job. I was about to say, even more seriously, thousands of employees, many of them concentrated in uh, single areas, Greater Manchester, Peterborough, people have been devastated by this, while these people were behaving as if a, a Roman orgy, these executives They haven't done anything. Directors. I mean, they, they might have done something that looks unsavoury now, when, the, when people feel like they've been abandoned, although, you know, they're, they're due to come home, and their holidays are ruined. I yeah. totally get that. Yeah. But people get paid big money to do jobs, yeah, and but... sometimes they don't do them very well. Yeah, but why do you, how do you get a performance bonus? Mm. Uh, of millions when your company is headed for the rocks yeah. and at the very moment when your company is headed for the rocks. Mm. What is a performance bonus? It, is it a reward for the company failure? World. Yeah, exactly. Mm. If your ratings were plummeting, they'd hardly be coming along to give you bigger pay. Mm. But that's what seems to happen in these kind of companies. It's an absolute scandal. But I'll tell you, I also hold the government responsible. It's going to cost the taxpayer far more to pay the unemployment pay for the yeah. newly redundant, to meet the uh, other costs involved in this crash. A moral hazard, says Boris Johnson. Who wouldn't recognise a moral hazard okay, if it was but, sitting on top but of it? On the pre mm, but, but on the previous point, got that, a point. that these uh, bosses were responsible for running the company and got performance bonuses, surely bosses have a duty to run a company well and shouldn't rely on the fact that the government will step in and bail them out if it goes Well, that's wrong. what it means by uh, moral hazard. But there are certain uh, institutions in Britain that are a part of the very fabric of our country. Do you know when I started in Parliament, almost before you were born, over 30 years ago, Thomas Cook was <laughs> actually in Parliament. <laughs> Tom, to, Thomas Cook actually was our official travel agent. It had an office right underneath mm -hmm. the Speaker's mm -hmm. chair. Mm -hmm. That's how much but of an institution not, but it's it was. it's not a state-run institution. No. In, and should taxpayers, hard-working men and women of this country, pay money to compensate well, for the failure of bosses to do their job? It, it's about accountancy versus economics. The accountant would say no, the economist would say yes. If it's going to cost you more to crash one of our great institutions, just as we're about to sail off into the world mm. uh, after Brexit, God willing, uh, to crash one of them, it's going to cost you more than it is to save it. Seems to me, not rocket science, that it's better to save it you mentioned in Brexit. the public sector. You, me you mentioned Brexit. Do you know what Jeremy Corbyn's view of Brexit is? I think so. Uh, Can you enlighten I've known us? Him, I've known him for uh, virtually 40 years. What is his view? Uh, he won't say it. Uh, no, he won't say it because he's leading a party which uh, has him by the throat or thought it did. They underestimated him, as so many have, so many times. Uh, so what is his view? I'm sure he's against the European Union. I sat up with him through the night, night after night, trying to bring down the, the Maastricht Treaty, the Lisbon okay. Hang Treaty. Hang on, but he says he campaigned for Remain. Well, he did. he voted Remain. Well, he said so. Uh, and Do because you not believe he him? was the leader of a party that... Uh, committed itself that way. It's not my style of leadership. Uh, my style of leadership would not be, I'm their leader, I must follow them. Uh, OK, but and... hang on, George Hadwell, because you've just said you've known him for decades. Yeah. And you believe that he's a Brexiteer. At heart, at heart. yes. Yes, but if he's saying one thing, which is he's a Remainer, uh, but he's actually doing something else... Well, I think he's... How he... are we supposed to well, trust him? I'm not him, I don't speak for him, but he'd say, I I'm the leader of a party which has a policy, I must reflect that policy, but 
But why uh, be leader if you're not prepared to lead? I mean, on the biggest issues since the Second World War, arguably, yeah. that this country's had, for the leader of one of the two main parties to simply not express a personal view about what he thinks of Brexit, it seems to me, as Nicola Sturgeon said, an abrogation of leadership. Well, have a heart. I mean, he did triumph over all these uh, backstabbers yesterday. Give him a moment to bask in having seen off what yeah, was... But all he's done is the right... All he's won yeah. is the right to not have... to make a decision. Well, that... functionally speaking, this was a coup attempt yesterday to get rid of Corbyn. And again, they underestimated him. He's lived to fight another day, I happen to believe, after an election, if he were to win it. He would... Uh, begin to show what he really feels about the European Union in the negotiation but George, for so a new Labour I'll deal. The same question as I did to Grace Blakely, who's um, who re representative on the National Policy Forum a little bit earlier. If I wanted to vote for Labour, mm. it's a little bit like playing Russian roulette with my vote. If I vote for Labour, it's a little bit, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get Brexit or Remain. Well, uh, of course, I accept that. I'm a strong supporter of Brexit and I, I regard the efforts of... Uh, Lady Nuggy and Lord Starmer and Tom Watson and the new, uh, the new uh, additions to the fifth column, Diane Abbott, for goodness sake, uh, the erstwhile Trotsky, uh, John McDonnell, they all tried basically to overthrow Corbyn yesterday and they failed. All this because does is the it members the cheered them to the echo. It represents the split in the Labour Party. There is. There's always Corbyn been a split in the Labour Party. The, the, what about quite the a biggest, split in the Tory when party, you say, too. The what do you say on the private education debate, the Labour wanting to get rid of well, private education? Look, I, I believe in parental choice, philosophically in freedom, but you've got to pay for uh, the full cost of that freedom. And... That can't happen as long as your uh, uh, 50,000 a year private school is being treated as a charity. So I support Labour ending its charitable status, uh, ending its VAT uh, exemption and so on. But people uh, still have to be able to send their kids to a, a Catholic school, for example, uh, or... Uh, or as many or, of the or, Labour or, or, grandees do, send their kids to private schools. Well, of course, that's an uncomfortable... Uh, you think? Position. Well, it's rank hypocrisy. Uh, the the uh, Diane Abbott story yeah. in particular, uh, because it's one thing if you were sent to a private school by your parents. Yeah, she's, You've she's, got no responsibility. She sent her own child but if you send to a public your own school child, and now wants to get rid of them. Yeah. I mean, maybe she's seen the light. Uh, who knows? Final question. Um, you very kindly tweeted about my Ronaldo interview. That was brilliant, Pierce. Last night, Messi won uh, another FIFA Best Player of the Year award. Mm. These two are jostling mm. for this legacy position of the greatest footballer to ever live. And by most, I think most people accept now, we might be living in the presence of the two all-time greats. Mm. Which one do you sit with? Are you oh, Ronaldo or Messi? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is the GOAT, uh, the greatest of all time. Messi did it and has done it, is doing it for one club all his life, and he hasn't done it at inter international well, level. He's won a major tournament he, with Portugal. He, uh, he's, carried... he's, also, he's also won the league in the three toughest leagues. Yes. And I do think that, that Messi... Makes, uh, that Messi makes is a wondrous player, wonderful no question. Player, yeah. But he has slightly, I think, sat in his comfort blanket of Barcelona. Yeah, yeah definitely. And he's never won anything with Argentina. And I think that those things do, actually, when it comes to the legacy of the great... In the legacy, yeah. I think the players who do go and challenge themselves in other... In other have leagues. Have slightly other. less comfortable places. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ronaldo could have stayed at Real Madrid for another four or five years. Easy. Um, picking but up he chose, the... he chose well, to another challenge. Absolutely. I hope he comes back. I hope he's the manager at Manchester United one day. There you go. Well, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, George, thanks very much. Indeed. Always good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. You. I look forward to your, your interview with Lionel Messi and then you'll change your mind. Well, he doesn't speak English, <laughs> so you can't actually interview Messi without an oh, interpreter. You can do it with an interpreter. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be as good. It wouldn't be as good. Or one of those babies. Also, I think you're either one or the other. I'm, I'm Team Ronaldo now. But funny enough, I mean, really? No, but, I hadn't noticed. You know, seven, eight years ago, when Messi was winning everything and was like the, the king, you know, it was probably little. Most people then would have said, I did, that Messi at the time seemed like the greatest. I just think the last five, six years, Ronaldo's the mm. consistency and the challenges he's had himself, to me, takes him above yeah. it. Well, FIFA, where are you? FIFA are you Ronaldo disagreed. or Messi? I like Messi.